there you are. It's the heart of the Clone Wars, and it's looking like neither side's gonna gain an upper hand. But to you, it really means nothing. As long as there's work, you're happy. And speaking of work, you just finished your last job. A simple bounty, but you got the job done, got paid, and now you're back to where you started. In a cantina on Ord Mantel. So, as you order your next drink, Corellian Rum on the Rocks, of course, you get a notification on your data pad. And sure enough, it's exactly what you were looking for. Your next bounty. Except, you're stunned when you read it. Jedi Rail Avaros. 5 million credits alive, 1 million credits dead. Client, anonymous. You quickly pay your tab and rush out of the cantina towards your docking bay. This is it, the bounty you've been looking for. One to propel you to instant fame among the underworld. As you enter your heavily modified Lancer class starship, you make your way to your armory. The one question is, what do you grab? I should think that you Jedi would have more respect for the difference between knowledge and <laughs> wisdom. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lore Academy. We are officially bringing back the full length videos and I'm very excited to announce that you will see many of them much more like this, being a bit more cinematic, a bit more interactive or involved for the audience. But as always, I am Dr. John, here to guide you on all your lore needs and let's get right into the video. Well, to start, let's jump right into weapons. When it comes to fighting a Jedi, your standard blaster pistol is gonna be of little use. Due to the nature of Jedi carrying lightsabers, the only way a blaster would be useful is if the Jedi is disarmed. So I'd recommend keeping one on you, but don't plan on using it. Because if you do, you'll probably end up getting that blaster bolt shot right back at you, right into your stomach, and that's the end of it for you. So instead, you might be better suited with a slug thrower. A slug thrower was a firearm which shot solid projectiles rather than an energy bolt. Therefore, the solid metal projectile would melt and get right on the Jedi. Now they have molten metal on them, which is incredibly useful for you. Perhaps the most famous slug thrower was the cycler rifle used by Tusken Raiders on Tatooine, but that wouldn't be too useful for you in this situation due to the low rate of fire. Instead, you'd want to use something such as a scatter gun. This would be much more useful. A scatter gun was essentially a slug thrower that shot many projectiles at once at an enemy and it'd be very useful. The reason why is because the Jedi can't block everything, and so the only thing they can do really is dodge. But just be careful with your scatter gun because it only works effectively at close range. Of course, firearms aren't the only thing you should focus on. You should also take a look at your ordnance supplies. As stated by HK-47, perhaps the most successful assassin droid ever, when trying to kill a Jedi, quote, select grenades, sonic streamers, cluster charges, and plasma charges, end quote. Essentially, all of these ordinances are focused on area of effect attacks, which a Jedi would have a hard time avoiding. To add on to HK-47, I would also like to add Mandalorian-style gauntlets. These gauntlets provide useful tools like a flamethrower, stun charges, and grappling tools. Essentially, everything you'd want to increase your survivability and deadliness when fighting a Jedi. And speaking of gauntlets, that leads me to my final section, which is armor. While a full set of Mandalorian Beskar armor would be ideal, chances are you don't have access to one. The reason why this would be so useful is because a full set of Mandalorian Beskar armor can deflect a lightsaber. Now, of course, like I said, you probably don't have access to one, so instead you're going to want to focus on only wearing a little bit of armor. The reason for this is because when fighting a Jedi, you want to take advantage of mobility and speed as much as you can. By taking advantage of mobility and speed, you'll be able to dodge a lightsaber and dodge the Jedi's attacks, which will allow you to have a much better survivability, which like I said, is essential. You need to be able to outlast this Jedi because he's not going to give up easily. Now to add on to the survivability, you should pair your armor with a pair of rocket boots. Rocket boots are often seen being used by Cad Bane and other bounty hunters like him because they are extremely useful for both surviving when thrown off a ledge, but also for creating distance between you and a Jedi. You want to do this because that will literally save your life. You need to be able to get away from that lightsaber and get away from that Jedi in certain times, and then also allows you to attack from areas he wouldn't necessarily expect it. So, you have those boots on, they might just save your life. 
And as you walk out of your armory, you're fully set now to fight a Jedi. Just to recap, you have your scatter gun. You have a standard blaster pistol in case you disarm them. You definitely have your gauntlets and you have a little bit of light armor to make sure that you can still survive getting thrown up against the wall, but that you're not gonna necessarily be limited by mobility either. And so that's about it for today. Stay tuned for part two of this series where we're gonna discuss tactics of fighting a Jedi. And until then, thanks for watching the Lore Academy and may the force be with you always.